Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the best way to play DS and DSi games on your PC, and that is, of course, with Melon DS, which is a pretty new DS emulator, it came out only a few years ago, but it's really taken over the scene in a huge storm. It's just simple, functional, and it just does everything. It does everything you could ever need it to do, it even has, like, Wi-Fi support for local multiplayer and stuff. It's just amazing. I'm not going to go over the multiplayer stuff today, just the main setup. And something else I'm also not going over today is how to get the BIOS files and the game ROMs backed up from your DS or DSi onto your computer. I do just want to mention there should be .nds files like this when your game is backed up, regardless of it's a DSi or DS game. .nds should be the file extension, and for the BIOS files, they should all be .bin files, like so. They will definitely have different names. I've renamed these files just to keep track of what's what. But yeah, with that all out of the way, let's go through the setup process. So on melondias.curibo64.net, which is where melondias is hosted, we go to downloads, go to the latest release, whatever it might be. Currently it's the 2024 November release, but it might be later depending on when you're watching this. Grab that Windows X64 one and save it wherever you want to save it. In my case, I'm going to save it to the desktop just for this tutorial. Once it's saved to your PC, we can go minus out of this, go right click here, extract that into a folder. Once that folder is nice and ready, double click into it and you'll see melondias.exe. All you got to do from here is double click into it. Uh, I do also recommend if you have a BIOS folder like me, it's just nice to have the BIOS folder in here in the same place so that way you don't forget where your BIOS files are. Uh, either way, going back to MelonDS itself, we can go configure it real quick. Let's go first off, drag it to make it a little bit bigger. Go to config, image settings. You can set the console type to DSi if the game supports it. So the only games I can actually think of that are DSi like supported, DSi enabled, uh, is Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2. If you're playing one of those two games, you should try DSi mode. It just should uh, really help things. Otherwise, DS mode just works way better most of the time. From here, you can play without BIOS files, but if you have BIOS files, you might as well use them. So use external, hit browse, then grab your DS ARM 9, your DS ARM 7, your DS firmware, then go to DSi mode, same thing, DSi ARM 9, DSi ARM 7, DSi firmware, and then DSi NAN. And just like that, we're all good to go. You can do full BIOS boot if you want to boot into like the, the home menu for your DS every time, which I don't want to bother with. You can enable an SD card if you want. There's not really a reason to. CPU emulation, all that. You don't really want to change anything else here. Just hit OK on that. Then go to config, go to input and hotkeys. We'll set our controls real quick. You can hit switch to keyboard mappings if you want to set keyboard controls and then it'll be set to keyboard. Switch to joystick mappings if you're using your joystick or a controller as most people call it, which in my case is the Xbox controller I've attached. And you just have to click all the different things and set all the different controls like so. One second to do all of that. And with that all out of the way, we hit OK. And then all of our controls are saved. From here, go to video settings, set it to OpenGL Compute Shader, and then set the internal resolution from one times native to four times native. If you have a beefier PC, do six times or four times should be more than good enough for most people. Uh, and then from here, config, you can change the audio settings, bring down your audio quite a bit, which is probably super useful. And hit OK on that. And then, uh, that should be about it for now. I don't think we need to do anything else. I guess interface, you can change stuff here if you want. That's about all you really have to do there. And from here, you can hit File, Open ROM, and then make your way over to one of your ROM files, and then go select it and hit Open. And just like that, it should boot up, just like so. Once we actually have stuff booted up, we want to hit View, and then Screen Layout and Hybrid. What this will do is it'll make like a right side layout of how the DS actually looks, while the left side will be the top screen, which is what most games use most of the time, and you'll have a bigger view of it that way. Uh, and you can do other stuff if you want. Generally, you don't really have to bother with most of this other stuff. That's really all you want most of the time. Screen size, we can like 3x. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to make it 2x, like so. 
And as you guys can see, we got the B movie game up and running. We could do stuff here if we wanted. I, I really don't want to <laughs> go into the B movie game too much. But you can see it up and starting. Another useful thing you can do is go to config and then input in hotkeys. And you go to the hotkeys and set fast forward to tab. So that way you can fast forward to speed through this stuff. Right, it's a very boring dialogue and whatever. You can just skip right through it. Now you can see whenever you're in a game, like it's like loading properly and all that. Everything's looking good. The top screen's looking nice. We're looking at very, very good quality in the game. Way higher than what you normally get on the DS. And yeah, you can see the top and bottom screen how they're supposed to be. If you need to do anything on the bottom screen, you can still do it. The top screen is just bigger on the left, which is great. Um, just also going to show off the other game working, but I'm going to show off the better way to boot most of these games, which is not by booting the emulator, but rather by right-clicking the game, whatever game file, right-click, open with, more apps, scroll down, look for another app in this PC, and make your way over to MelonDS.exe. So I've made my way over to MelonDS, we're just going to click on it, hit open, and now it just directly opens it for me. I don't have to do anything fancy, anything special. Things just work. And now anytime I click on the ROM, it will directly boot the game, and I don't even have to think about it. Uh, and there we go. We got our Shrek stuff going. I also just realized I forgot to record audio. Uh, there is game audio on this, just trust me on that. I, I guess you have to do a bit of trust on me there, but if you trust me, I'll have to install stuff. You can just trust me if there's audio here. I'm not going to bother like turning on or whatever. And yeah, you can see the game's up and running. Everything is up and functional. We are Shrek racing. Uh, if we close out of this, we can we can double click on any of these just to quickly boot up emulator just like that, and it'll instantly boot with everything perfectly like that. Uh, another very useful thing it does is wherever your game files are, it'll put your save files. You can see we have our B movie and Shrek saves just right here, right as a file, and we can easily use that with other emulators, use it with our real DS, etc., etc. With that being said, that's about all there is to it. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns in the comments below, and I'll try to reply to them if I see them and I know the answer. And with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed and hope you have fun playing your games. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.